the highest institution of the Catholic Church, the Vatican. Often called the holiest place on earth, the Vatican is surprisingly surrounded by a number of conspiracy theories. Most famous among them is the Time Machine Conspiracy. In May of 1972, a shocking article was published in the Domenica del Corriere, a famous Italian weekly newspaper. It talked of a Benedictine monk who allegedly helped build a time machine and kept it a secret below the ground of Vatican City. This monk was Father Pellegrino Ernetti, a well-respected, reputable man of the church. He was also a linguist, a historian of ancient music, and a physicist who majored in quantum mechanics. It is said that Ernetti's knowledge of quantum mechanics was on par with that of famous physicists at the time. Above all, his assertions about time machines were surprisingly detailed and concrete. In the 1950s, following the end of World War II, the Vatican saw the importance of focusing not only on religion, but also on science. The Pope began looking for those in the Vatican who were involved in the field of science. Ernetti was one of the twelve chosen ones. People outside of Vatican City were recruited by the Pope as well. They included famous people, namely Nobel Prize winner and the greatest physicist of the time, Enrico Fermi, and NASA scientist Dr. Werner von Braun, who contributed to sending humans to the moon. The team of 12 prominent scientists was given a project by the Pope. The order was short and simple. Build a time machine. The team believed that there was a misconception surrounding the concept of people from the present traveling back in time. They thought of approaching it in a different manner, since what is known as a time machine is impossible to exist. Ernetti suggested building a machine that allows humans to view the past, instead of traveling through time. He believed that human voices and visual information would surely remain somewhere and not disappear, even after the moment has passed. It was hypothesized that by extracting the remaining sources in the form of energy, the team would be able to transmit the visual information and audio from a certain era through the machine. With Ernetti's hypothesis as the basis, development of the time machine began in earnest. A few years later, after countless trials and errors, the greatest intellectuals of the time finally succeeded in developing a time machine. It was a machine that captured the past, just as Ernetti hypothesized. The team named it the Chronovisor. The energy generated by physical wavelengths must leave a trace somewhere in the dimension. These traces are reconstructed in the form of light and sound, sending and receiving the originating source in the form of audio and video before transmitting it to the CRT. The Chronovisor is said to have been shaped like a large TV. Setting the desired era and time using the levers and buttons, the extracted energy would be received according to the operating principle, allowing the team to get a glimpse of the past as if they were watching TV. According to Ernetti's testimony, he was able to personally witness and document speeches and performances of now-deceased famous people. Not only did he capture the moments of Napoleon and Mussolini delivering speeches, he also witnessed the crucifixion of Jesus Christ at Calvary. However, not long after the completion of the chronovisor, the Vatican ordered the team to disassemble the machine and discontinue the project due to fears of the machine potentially being abused in the future. Despite having succeeded in developing such a tremendous machine, the 12 members of the team agreed that it could cause global problems if it were to be exploited. The chronovisor was then disassembled and kept in a secret underground vault in Vatican City. Following the discontinuation of the project, Ernetti revealed the machine's blueprints, as well as real photos of Jesus taken by the machine. However, herein lies the problem. It was later revealed that the photos of Jesus were fake. The photo of Jesus' face turned out to be a wooden sculpture carved by the Spanish sculptor Lorenzo Culat Valari, while the photo of Jesus and his apostles turned out to be a post-processed oil painting by the German artist Johannes Raphael Velay. Ernetti also claimed that he went back in time and transcribed Quintus Aeneas's tragedy, Thyestes, in his own handwriting after seeing the play himself. Quintus Aeneas was a prominent figure who was often considered the father of ancient Roman literature, and most of his works were said to have been lost. But Dr. Catherine Eldred, an expert on ancient Roman literature from Princeton University, saw the transcript written by Ernetti and dismissed it as pure fabrication, saying that it was nothing but a piece of paper filled with lies. Moreover, it is said that the transcript contained words that did not even exist at the time Thyestes was originally written. Once again, Ernetti gained the public's attention. In an instant, he was reduced from a well-respected monk to a con artist. I have never released any photos. All the photos taken by the chronovisor are kept below the ground of Vatican City. And although I did transcribe Aeneas's play, it has never been released to the public either. The photos of Jesus, as well as the transcript, were fabricated by the newspaper publishing company to create a buzz among the general public. As it turns out, Ernetti was telling the truth. The photos of Jesus, reportedly taken by Ernetti himself, turned out to be photos fabricated by the same weekly newspaper, La Dominica del Corriere. As for the transcript, it is true that there were no records of Ernetti ever revealing it to the public. This means that the one and only thing he revealed through the media was the blueprint of the chronovisor. Despite Ernetti's explanation, the controversy continued. 
It was revealed that Enrico Fermi and Dr. Werner von Braun, who were known to have participated in the project, were both residing in the U.S. during the time the chronovisor was being built. At some point, Ernetti stopped responding to interviews and questions from the public. Despite the matter no longer being headline news, people continued to criticize Ernetti for financial fraud. The mystery of a time machine hiding under the Vatican seemed to end, as all the way up until his death in April 1994, Ernetti never answered any more questions regarding the chronovisor. After eight years had passed, a book titled Le Nouveau Mystère du Vatican was published in 2002. The author was Father François Brunet, a member of the Pontifical Biblical Institute. The book was filled with stories about the Vatican, the chronovisor, as well as Father Ernetti himself. Due to pressure from the Vatican, Father Ernetti could no longer be interviewed. This was because Pope Pius XII, the Pope at the time, had personally ordered him to stop making remarks about the chronovisor. The photos spread all over the world had branded Ernetti as a fraud. However, as he had said before, he was not the one who revealed them. He was a respected theologian. He had no greed for money at all. Why would he want to leave such a stain on his own life? Before his death, Ernetti told me, the chronovisor does exist and it was indeed working. Father Bruni states that a piece of evidence that supports this is the Vatican's 1988 decree that declares anyone using an instrument of such characteristics will be immediately excommunicated. In March 2017, conspiracy theorists circulated that the CIA had a time machine in their possession and that the Vatican was the one behind it this time as well. According to the conspiracy theories, the Vatican had decided that building the chronovisor with their own technology at the time was rather difficult, and so they requested help from the U.S. It is said that the U.S. Department of Defense actively supported the project, with the CIA being deeply involved. It is also said that, with the help of the CIA, Enrico Fermi and Dr. Werner von Braun were able to perform research for Vatican City while residing in the U.S. However, as they were reaching the end of the chronovisor's development, the Vatican was concerned about the CIA possibly using the machine for political purposes, which ultimately led to them scrapping the entire project. To this day, both sides have not made any comments regarding the matter. The time machine that is said to be kept in a secret underground cellar in Vatican City, the chronovisor, no one has ever succeeded in verifying the abilities of the machine to this day. Scholars say it does not matter whether the chronovisor is fake or not. Ernetti's time machine theory is still rather intriguing. What lies deep beneath Vatican City? This has been Strange Night.